the Paul Leslie interviews. Paul, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I, I listened to your uh, thing with uh, Paul Schaefer. It was great. Oh, well, thank you so much for listening. Yeah, sure. I enjoyed it. I, you know, I'd known him for a long, long time. He's a great guy, and it was fun to uh, watch him. Well, the man we're talking to, I have to introduce. He doesn't need an introduction, but I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> He's perhaps the most widely known American television personality, a singer, an author. He was called by David Letterman an icon and an American treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Regis. <laughs> well, hello, everybody. It's me. It's Regis. I can't believe it. Regis Philbin. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Regis Philbin. It's great talking to you, and uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, meet all of your pals and your friends down there in uh, Georgia, huh? That's it. The Peach State. Yeah, sure it is. <laughs> you know, I was interviewing the record producer, Alan Schwartzberg. Oh, yeah. I told him, I said, I'm going to be interviewing Regis Philbin. Do you have any advice? <laughs> and he just said, you'll love him. <laughs> Known him for a long time. Did about five, uh, you know, things with him. And uh, it turned out to be pretty good. But he was a great one. And uh, where is he, in Florida now? He was in Brooklyn. Oh, he was, huh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, good for him. So tell us, on a typical day these days, what does Regis Philbin do first thing in the morning? Oh, not much, I'll tell you that. It's uh, really something. You know, it's been like five and a half years since I have been on TV. And uh, I mean, I was on for so many years that now it's, uh, it's uh, all of a sudden uh, kind of empty in my life. And so uh, you've got to look around for other things, and uh, it's kind of tough to tell you the truth. It's it's tough. In w in what way? In in what way? Yeah, I mean, are you are you feeling like you want to you want to do something, or w what is it? Well, you know, after you do, after you spend uh, sixty years on, on TV, and all of a sudden you're you're off. It's it's really tough. It's something that you've got to experience to understand. But it, it just it, there's nothing else for you to get worried about to think about. So all of a sudden you're you're on your own. You know it, it, it's it's so different to be away from everybody that uh, all of a sudden you uh, you got to figure out what what there is for you in, in this life. And uh, after a while, you realize uh, it, it's up to you to make it happen if it's going to happen at all. So when you leave the, the TV or whatever it is, it, it, it's an altogether different life, altogether different situation. And that's what it's become. And uh, frankly, uh, I wasn't even thinking about it until I, left, until I left. But that's the way it is. One of the things that Alan Schwartzberg was telling me is he said, People are drawn to you. They see you on the street and they recognize you. So what is it like when people that you don't know, they recognize you and they, they think that they know you? Well, you know, I'm used to that now because uh, when I'm walking in the street, that happens all the time now. And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I have to smile and thank them very much and just keep going. But it, it's nice to... Uh, to get that once in a while from someone that's just walking on the street with you and all of a sudden, bang, and they're, they're, they're bringing you up and you're, they're saying hello. And so, you know, it's a whole thing, but uh, you've got to do it. I mean, they're, they're, they've been wonderful people to listen to you all those years, and it's great to know they still think about you now. Do you feel like they really know you? Oh, I think they do. I mean, uh, they know me from... Being in, on TV, and if they see me, uh, they like if they are here in New York, but they live elsewhere. They're just in New York to uh, take a look at the city. They uh, they just uh, uh, come up to you and want to know more about you, how you're feeling about everything. It's very nice. It really is. Who would you say in this world 
knows you the best? Who knows Regis the most? Probably Regis. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably the only one who really knows, cares about Regis. You know, it's it's been a good life. It really has. I, I do miss uh, going on uh, the TV and uh, having some fun with that. But uh, other than that, what else can I can I ask for? I wanted you to tell us a little bit about your uh, your pride and joy, <laughs> to 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 use a little pun there, joy. The the one. What about who, joy? Well, what do you love most about joy? What do I love most about joy? She <laughs> she's right here. Joy, here you are. What? Why don't you say hello to me? Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well. I never dreamed I would get to talk to you as well. <laughs> well, consider this an added bonus. It's very nice. <laughs> no, it's just that I, I can't help but hear Regis saying that he hasn't been on TV in five and a half years. Meanwhile, I live with him, and I know how many things he's done and been doing, and I don't know, I guess, <laughs> that doesn't count. But, um, you know, Regis goes uh, on with Kathy Lee on the Today Show. He goes on Rachel Ray. He does a lot of appearances on, uh, you know, just as a guest. And he's uh, always having meetings with friends who have ideas for him, who want to talk to him about a new show or something. And, frankly, I think he's enjoying this semi-retirement. Very good. I'm glad. So, anyway, I just... Uh, heard your tape last night. I really enjoyed your show. I just wanted to say hello. And I think Paul is such a musical genius. And when he just, when he said he would do our arrangement for us, and this guy's in love with you, it was um, it was an added thrill just to go on Letterman and, and perform it. it. I mean, Paul produced the whole thing. It was really exciting. Well, since we have you on the, the line here, what is it like when you have had the chance to sing with Regis, to sing with your husband? <laughs> it, it came back to me last night when we were listening to your tape. I never expected that to happen, and it, it, uh, it all was very spontaneous, and uh, they were looking for a singer to do a duet with him, the uh, record label. I think it was Hollywood Records. And so I was chosen to do it just because I knew the song and it was just going to be a demo and they liked it so much they uh, they said why don't you do it on the record and that's how it all started so Regis and I you know went on the road together <laughs> it wasn't all roses but <laughs> you know when you're working with your spouse there's always things that you know you don't you learn about them that sharing a dressing room for instance Regis would travel with like a hairbrush and a comb, and I would bring on, you know, all this, all this stuff that women need. <laughs> and uh, so that was a big eye-opener for him. But it was totally great. I mean, I loved every minute of it. So those were the years. It was really fun. So I'm going to put Regis back on, Paul, okay? Hold on just a second. It was nice to talk to you. Nice to talk to you. How'd you like that? <laughs> That's what i got to live with <laughs> every day. <laughs> For 48 years now. <laughs> <laughs> that was an added bonus. You know, I was thinking before this, uh, before we were doing this interview, I said, I wonder if I'll ever get to, to interview Joy Philbin. And there you have it. <laughs> Why, sure, you got it. <laughs> and you just got the part of it, you know. There's a whole big story there for Joy. <laughs> oh, she's been a lot of fun over the years. She really has. She has a beautiful speaking voice in addition to a singing voice. Yes, yes, she does. She really does. Speaking of beautiful voices, we have to mention your idol, Bing Crosby. Oh, yeah. Well, he was the best, I thought. Well, of course, when I grew up like seven, eight years old, uh, I would listen to his show on the radio. And, uh, I mean, I really looked forward to it every week. And, you know, but that was the only time you could hear him. So as we as we grew up over the years, I still remembered him and I still sang uh, a bunch of his songs to myself. And, you know, one day we were taking a walk with Joey Bishop up Pine Street in Hollywood. 
before we were doing his show. It was in the late 60s. And, but I never told anybody that I was crazy about uh, Bing Crosby or he meant something to me or I loved his songs. And so we were walking along and uh, we, we walked for the first four four months all the way up Vite Street to Hollywood Boulevard and over to Cahuenga and then back down to where the show was. It was a 45-minute walk and I uh, just uh, all of a sudden uh, had him he he would just walk with me. He would just listen to what I had to say, you know. And so uh, that's that's the way it was. So we walked so much that after a while, I had nothing to talk about. And then one one day, I, I brought up a Big Crosby and uh, told him that, that that when I was a kid, I, I loved Crosby and I knew some of his songs and sang them to myself and all that. And then asked him about what he wanted to do when he was a kid, and he was 12 years old. He went to the to the uh, oh, the uh, place where in Philadelphia where they would get on the train, and he would talk to the people at five o'clock when people were leaving their uh, their businesses and going home, and uh, just get to throw stories and fun stories at these people and to see if they would listen to him. And they did, and he became quite, uh, quite, a, quite a pretty good uh, comedian. And so uh, that's the way it was. And about four months later on the show, I hear that Bing Crosby is coming on the show. And I said, oh, my God, I hope uh, what to say doesn't tell me about uh, him uh, because, uh, you know, I, I would feel badly about that. Anyway, uh, sure enough, he said to me, listen, uh, Bing was on the show with me, and he said, Bing, you know, this boy followed you all of his life. Why don't you sing a song to uh, Bing Crosby? And Bing looked at me, and the audience laughed, and everybody laughed, but the heat was on me. And so I looked at Crosby, and I, I sang this song to him. And he, 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 they liked it. Everybody liked it. As a matter of fact, I got a phone call from a guy and a, te- a team in uh, Chicago, who wanted to know if uh, they, I could do a whole uh, bunch of songs for, for them on their uh, all their things. So I said, fine, I'll do it. And uh, that's the way it was. And that's the way it began, for me anyway, in uh, in the music business. So it, it was great, and I, I wound up doing five of these things over the years. And it's been a lot of fun and did a lot of uh, singing uh uh, all around the country and all of that. So that's that's about it for for the singing and the songs. It was all it was all Big Crosby. There's a song that you recorded on that very first album, and then you recorded it again. Absolutely an American classic. Pennies, Which one is that? Pennies from Heaven. Oh, Pennies. Well, that's the song. Yes, that is exactly the song that I did. That song has to have tremendous meaning for you. It does, because there he was sitting right next to me, and he would come in a little bit, you know, and just hum a little bit to keep me going because there was no band playing and nobody knew I was even going to do that. I didn't even know I was going to do it, but Bishop put me in that kind of a position, and so I went ahead and did it, and that's what started the whole thing for me. Would you sing our audience just a line from Pennies from Heaven? Every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. Don't you know each cloud contains pennies from heaven? That's it. You know, those are the first two songs, the first two uh, things in it. I wish you could see the smile on my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year, 2017, is a special year for fans of Dean Martin. This is the centenary year of that great singer. That's right. It's 100 years old today. Not today, but right now. Yeah. About Dean? Yeah, you have a chapter in your book, How I Got This Way, about meeting him. And I was hoping you could tell our audience. Well, you know, the first time I went to see him was uh, in 1949. I was graduating from high school here in, in New York and four or five guys and I and the gals went out to see him at uh, 
oh, what was the name of the place that they all went to? He was there with with uh, with the Jack with Joey Joey Bishop, not Joey Bishop. Uh, can't think of his name. Jerry, uh, the other guy. What's Jerry Lewis. Name? Jerry Lewis, of course. And so they, they walked out, and uh, we were there, sitting right there in front of them. And uh, it was just great. But I noticed how great uh, the Dean was. He was just a, a great singer and a very funny guy. And he kept uh, Joey, uh, not Joey, uh, Jerry going. And uh, they were great together. The Copacabana it was. And so that's, I said, wow, this guy is, is really terrific. But, you know, then I had to go into Notre Dame and then into the service because it was going to be a war in Korea. And so that was, he was, uh, you know, he was doing well. But then he left Joey, of rather Jerry, went into TV and in, uh, in the movies as well. And he became great and I've loved him all these years, and finally I, I met a guy that was doing his uh, his uh, his story. His, he, he would do a story about uh, him every every month, and it was just great. And I thought, uh, gee, uh, I'd love to. See. And so I became a friend with this guy, and he told me everything. He worked with uh, with him, and he had a great fan club and. Anyway, it was a great story, and I loved uh, reading about Dean and seeing him. And then once uh, years go by, I went into a uh, into a uh, a movie place where they were doing movies, and uh, went to sit with him in his room. Dean was waiting to go out and do a little thing for the movie, and so it, it was just great. And uh, we talked for about 45 minutes, and uh, that's about the only time I really got close to Dean Martin. But I've enjoyed him all these years. I have all of his songs, and I play them all the time. And he was great. Just a great, great actor and a great singer. Did you enjoy him? Oh, I, I do enjoy him. He's timeless, you know? Yes, he is. Yeah. He did that great uh, show for a long time on, on TV. And it was just terrific. Something that you have in your uh, another credit to your name is that you appeared more on the David Letterman show, the Late Show with David Letterman, than anybody. <laughs> you know, I don't know how that happened, but yeah, that's that's true. Uh, he would uh, call me. Well, sometimes it was, when somebody else wasn't coming, they'd call me, and I'd jump in a cab and go down to his place and uh, pinch it for the guy, I guess. Just go up there. And always had fun with him. Always got along with him. Thought he was great. I think I think he was probably one of the best of of the guys. Of course, there was uh, a, lo a lot of people who were, were terrific who went on at eleven thirty at night. But Letterman held his own. I thought he was very good. And you talk in your book about uh, the fact that nobody really got to you know nobody really gets to know the real David Letterman. Well, that's true, I think. <laughs> I mean, he's very uh, very uh, quiet about himself. And uh, you, you can spend a lot of time with him on the show, but you'll rarely see him off the show, you know? But I, but I went through that, too, a couple of times. He, uh, he's, he's different off the show than he is on the show. But he, he worked so many years on that kind of a show, I mean, into the 30s. Yeah, about 36 years, I think, between the uh, the times when he was was on the uh, late late nights things. But he was great. He he was just terrific. I thought. Yeah, I agree. I, he was always my favorite from that time slot. Mm -hmm. You just said that he was different off the air, like when you were having dinner with him. So, what is he really like when you're sitting eyeball to eyeball with him? He's not, well, he's more quiet and uh, just, you know, we'll talk, but uh, you're not going to get much out of him, you know? But on, on the show, he's got to come across. He's got to talk. He's got to let everybody hear it. And so that's how that, that happens. You know, another person that was a guest on this show 
that was just fascinating, a behind-the-scenes guy, a writer that you wrote several books with, his name, Bill Zamey. You know him as the Zamey Man. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. What was it like to write these books with Bill Zamey? Well, he he was terrific. I mean, he was a great writer. I, I wrote about two or three of them. I have five books, and I think he was with me for three of them. Uh, I've always enjoyed him. He was smart. He, he had a lot of ideas about about the people maybe I should mention, write about in the in the book. He, he made things easy for you, but he was he was really a terrific guy, and I, I thought he was just great. And so whenever I would have a, a book that I wanted to write, I would call him and say, hey, "What do you think of this one?" And we'd you know talk it out, and uh, that's how it would uh, get to become a book. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you saw you heard some of the stuff he did. He was just just great. I, I loved him. And uh, I, I hope he's okay now. I think he is. But uh, we'll see as, as, as the time goes by. What are your recollections of making the duet album, Just You, Just Me, with your wife? Oh, I think she was terrific. We, we enjoyed it a lot. She had never really sung before to anybody except herself and, and me. Maybe I could hear her. But... Um, we we tried it on the on the thing and uh, and she she played it well and we really we really thought she was terrific and I'm so glad we we did her and used her I I enjoy every now and then I play the songs back and she sounds great to me just really great. What is the greatest blessing to being Regis Philbin? What is the best thing about being Regis Philbin? Well, let's see. <laughs> When you go back and you start in, the, in 1955, uh, and you, you you really want to get into the TV area, just beginning itself, all of a sudden you, you find out how difficult it is. So it took a, a long time for me to to get back into Los Angeles, in, into Hollywood, and get on the air. I mean, it, it's it was tough because it was just so much. Not, not not so much on the air in those days. Now, of course, it's it's really all over the place. Like hundreds of of people are on TV somewhere in in the country, you know. But anyway, uh, a, a millionaire show came along my way, and they sent uh, me a tape from the show when it was first brought over from England, and they were looking for a host, and I kind of loved it right away. I knew it was special, and I wanted it, so I wasn't even on the short list, so I went after it. I had to fly to London to audition for it, and the rest is history. It really was a great high for me, and I loved it. Every contestant was screened carefully, and the answers to the questions were kept in great secrecy. And that's the way it was. I don't know if it will ever be that way again, but that's how it started on TV, because after all, there was a millionaire uh, that was going to happen, uh, come up and get his million. And uh, sure enough, there were eight people who, who did that over in the, the three uh, years that I had that one going on uh, Sunday nights. So, and, and Kathy Lee left me uh, when we had auditions. and Kelly was chosen to be my new co-host. And so that was how the... The week would go, you know, so it was very busy because Sunday night was the big one with the millionaires. And uh, the show, the rest of the show, Monday through Friday, that was important, too. So it was quite a quite a time. In your book, How I Got This Way, there's so many names of, of just iconic people that you have met. A lot of them that not many people can say that they got to meet up close, like Jack Nicholson, for example. Oh my God! Yeah, how about that, Jack Nicholson? <laughs> he uh, he was somebody that I enjoyed on the movies, and when he would come to New York, uh, he wouldn't do the show, but I I would see him and go over to him and talk to him, and he, he would say, "When you come out to L.A., come see me." And so one night I I went out there, and uh, about five o'clock in the afternoon, and he wanted to, he took me to a a basketball game, you know, that uh, L.A. had. 
and uh, sat in the first uh, aisle, and uh, it was a, it was great. It was a great show. And then we went out. We had dinner, and uh, that that's the way it was with him. He was a, a terrific guy and a great uh, actor. I think. I, I think he's great. There's all kinds of people listening in, from young people, older people, people in all different parts of the country. So this is a very open-ended question, but to anyone who's listening in, your fans, what would you say to them? Well, you know, uh, what would I say? What could I say except that I was there all those years and, uh, you know, it was time to leave, and I did, and I missed them very, very much. I uh, wish I uh, had could. I wish I could still do it, you know, and I probably could if I if I put my head to it. But um, in those days, uh, it was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it very much. And I I hope they did too. My last question: hmm. If you were trying to describe Regis Philbin to somebody else, so kind of like talking in the third person. Who would you say Regis Philbin is? Who is Regis at heart? Oh, God, who is Regis at heart? <laughs> he, that's, that, that's a tough one. I mean, uh, when when you get in front of a camera, you know you, you've got to really work hard because there are people watching the show, and and that's the that's the important thing. And so that's what I tried to do. I knew they wanted to be entertained, they wanted to hear something, and so that's how I spent my time, especially in the first 15 minutes of these uh, ten, uh, ten uh, uh, first 15 minutes of these shows at nine o'clock in the morning. That's why I would go out the night. Joy and I would go out the night before, just to see a movie, just to see something that I could talk about the next day and have fun about. And so that's what it was. And I, I think it paid off. I, there were no writers. I, I did have uh, either Kathy Lee or uh, or Kelly with me, and that was good. But you know, you have to really get involved with with what's going on around town, so that everybody is is uh, knows about it. And that's how it all started, and that's how it ended too. Well, Mr. Regis Philbin. It was years and years ago I told people, I said, one day I'm going to interview Regis Philbin. <laughs> Why did it take this long? <laughs> well, it, it, it happened. It sure did. And uh, I, I want to thank you very much for thinking about me and for remembering me and for putting me on your show. It was a great honor, believe me. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Thank you very much. Take care of yourself and good luck. Good luck. God bless. Okay, bye-bye.